Welcome to White Lecture Online. Our next uh, request, view request for videos in, um, well, let me start this one over again. <laughs> I can't think of the words. What are we doing? Phys fluid statics. All right. Welcome to White Lecture Online. Our next view request on fluid statics deals with submerging a hollow sphere made out of copper but hollow in the center in some water. And the weight when it's suspended in air is 2.59 newtons and when it's suspended in liquid or in water it's 2.17 newtons. So the difference between those two numbers would be the buoyancy force. They want us to find the volume of that sphere but they're not clear whether or not the sphere is completely submerged like this or if it's partially submerged like this because it would make a difference. So let's work it out both ways and see what we get. So first of all, we need to find the buoyancy force. And the buoyancy force is going to be equal to the weight when it's suspended in air minus the weight when it's suspended in the liquid. It doesn't matter if it's this case or this case, it's still going to be the buoyancy force. So the buoyancy force is equal to the weight in air minus the weight inside the liquid. So in this case, it's the difference between 2.59 newtons minus 2.17 newtons and the difference looks like it's going to be 0 0.42 newtons. So add that to that, that gives us indeed 2.59. So that's the buoyancy force. Now to find the volume. We're going to use, so let's start with A, we're going to use the situation where it's completely submerged so the entire volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the liquid that was, that was displaced. And the buoyancy force can be defined as follows. Buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. And of course, the formula for the weight is equal to the mass times acceleration to the gravity. And then realizing that the density of a liquid is equal to the mass divided by the volume, such that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, we can replace this mass by the density times the volume. So this is going to be the density of the liquid, which in this case is water, times the volume of the displaced liquid, times g. And of course, the volume of the displaced liquid, in this case, is going to be equal to the volume of the sphere because the sphere is entirely submerged. Which means that if we calculate the volume of the displaced liquid, we'll get the volume of the sphere as well. So the volume of the liquid, which is equal to the volume of the sphere is going to be equal to, so notice we have the buoyancy force on one side and we have rho Vg on the other side. So we take the buoyancy force and divide it by the density and the acceleration to gravity that leaves us with the volume. So this is going to be the buoyancy force divided by the density of the liquid, in this case water, divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So this is equal to 0.42 newtons divided by the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And let's see here. Z 0 0.42 divided by 1,000 divided by 9.8 equals 4.286 times 10 to the minus 5 meters cubed. Now, since there's a a million cubic centimeters in a cubic meter, we can write this as 42.86 cubic centimeters. So that would be the volume of the sphere, assuming the entire sphere was suspended in the water, which we need to assume then that the, the, the thickness of the copper was thick enough so that the air inside combined with the copper would not be less dense in combination than the liquid. But what if it wasn't completely suspended? What if only a fraction of the total volume was suspended? How would we work out the problem that way? Well, we'll then go to B. Again, we use the same definition. The buoyancy force is equal to the weight of the displaced liquid, which of course is equal to the mass times acceleration to gravity, which is equal to rho Vg, where these are the uh, density of the liquid, and the volume of the displaced liquid. Now that's very important. Is the volume of the displaced liquid, which is only the fraction of the volume of the entire sphere. Now we don't know what the fraction is, so we'll just leave it as F. So in this case, this is gonna be equal to the density of the liquid times the, the fraction 
of the volume of the, of the, of the of not the displaced liquid, but in this case, of the sphere times g. So the, this, the volume of the displaced liquid is only going to be a fraction of the volume of the sphere, and of course, f is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. Right, so it's somewhere between 0 and 1 times the volume of the sphere. All right, now the buoyancy force is still the buoyancy force, and we know what the buoyancy force is equal to. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to say that the fraction times the volume of the sphere is equal to the buoyancy force divided by the density of the liquid divided by g. Notice that's exactly the same as what we had before, so we know that that's going to be equal to fraction of the volume of the sphere is equal to 42.86 cubic centimeters, which means that the volume of the sphere is equal to 42.86 centimeters, oh, not squared, centimeters cubed, <laughs> because we're talking about a volume, divided by the fraction that's submerged in the water. Now, we don't know what that fraction is. We weren't given that information. But let's, for example, say that it was 10% of the total volume, just to pick it, to pick something. So let, let F equal 10%, just to give you something. All right, in that case, the volume of the sphere would be equal to 42.86 cubic centimeters divided by 0 0.1, which would be 428.6 cubic centimeters. So I just picked a number at random. It probably wouldn't be 10% because, hmm, let's see here. Because, let's see, could it be 10%? Yeah, it could be 10% if the skin was very thin. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, that's right. If the skin was very thin, there was lots of air, wasn't very dense in combination, it could be as little as 10%, and therefore, we could have that much of a volume for the sphere. So notice, the less volume of the sphere was submerged, the larger the volume of the sphere itself. And that's how you would do the problem. Of course, the only thing we'd have to know then at that point is what's the fraction of the volume of the sphere that was submerged in the liquid. But that is how it's done. Either way, that's how you find the solution. It would be easy to just do the water displacement, fill the thing to the top, and then measure how much water came out. You want to use Archimedes' principle? <laughs> So yeah, uh, correct, if you simply force the whole object to be uh, submerged, and if you have the water, that, so the trick is this, right? So what you're suggesting is you put a pitcher in there with a, a means to get the, let the water out, you collect the water in a beaker, you fill all the way to the top, then you force the submergence of the sphere, which means all that extra liquid that fill the beaker, and the volume here would be equal to the volume there. That's Archimedes' principle. That's why he's so famous. But you can't claim credit for that because he already did that. Yeah, just a few hundred years too late. <laughs> a few hundred years, yes. <laughs> All right, but hey, that's another way to do it. Very elegant.